Hey guys, it's Brent with Like It's Motorsports. It's been a day. I have, uh, I'll tell you, Mr. Mark, this engine's been fighting me tooth, hair, and eyeball. Um, had some issues with the rocker arms, and we'll get to that in a second, but i um, been running myself ragged trying to get everything lined up. Um, finally got a short block done, so we are making progress. Um, show everybody what's going on here this is a uh world products man of war block 4155 bore size very beefy so four bolt main caps on all five caps billet caps my camera lens almost acts like it's dirty because of all the light reflecting back off this crankshaft. So this is a Bryant uh, billet crank 3.385 stroke and we're turning some Dyer's rods 5.4 length on the rods and some custom race tech pistons. So I'll show you that here in a second. I just got done torquing the rod bolts and um, I want to check the clearance in between our rods. It's called the side-to-side -side clearance. And uh, make sure all those are kosher. Then we'll flip her over and I'll show you the top end. All right, here's the top end. Custom race tech pistons. We had this uh, crowns coated. Just to add against, road race engines tend to get hot uh, in the in the top end of the engine. Uh, combustion temperatures and that, that sort of thing because they're constantly on the gas a lot of the times wide open throttle and we run a little bit of compression this one's going to be about 11 and a half to one um, so you want to keep everything cool in the chamber and on top of the piston that makes the engine happy keeps the piston cool and that sort of thing so we had the tops uh, coated um, so this is a dry sump engine. That's why I've got the lifter valley plugged up. Um, in a small block forward, there's not going to be much oil up here. Uh, the cylinder heads drain via these holes right here. And they drain into the crank case. This one drains actually in the timing cover and is aimed pretty much right at um, the timing set and the thrust plate and that sort of thing. So that's why we don't do any extra drilling um, on gallery bolts or plugs or whatever. Actually, I don't do any of that on any of my engines. I've never seen the need for it, but especially on a small block Ford. Um, this keeps oil off the crank, off the rotating assembly. Uh, that's called parasitic drag. You don't want any of that. That can rob horsepower. So if you're curious on how the oil is going to get out, um these well first of all let me back up so not much oil draining from the heads not any oil draining from the heads um only thing that you're going to see is um maybe a little bit of splash from oil coming through hitting the lifters and bouncing up that sort of thing so there's not going to be much oil up here to begin with this is a hole that they use to it connects here and it connects uh let's see here let's see if i get you a better shot right here unfortunately the cylinder head is so close to this that you can't you can't really use it um there may be some aftermarket heads that are notched or maybe this is for better suited for a 9500 block but uh, you can't pull you can't scavenge from this with a dry sump there's just no way to get a fitting in there um, I did put a little bit of a front drain in here. So when Mark gets on the brakes, any oil that's up here will uh, go out the front, stay off the crank. But if there's any oil up here, we're gonna scavenge it from uh, our intake manifold. So in later videos, I'll show you how to do that. Um, we'll just run an extra stage on our dry sump pump and we'll pull from a tube that goes behind our intake manifold and will hang down kind of like about like this. And that'll catch any oil that's up here that puddles up. If there's any, 
Most importantly, it'll pull vacuum on the top end of the engine. Since this is blocked off, um, it's se segregated from the bottom end of the motor. The scavenge lines that are gonna be from the dry sump oil pan will scavenge and pull vacuum from the bottom. This line will pull vacuum from the top. So a little bit of extra horsepower when you block all this keeps the oil from raining down on the crank. That parasitic drag is, is a pain and a little bit of horsepower to be found there. So timing cover is on. Here's our Peterson. Uh, this is where our uh, push line from our pump pushes oil into the engine. That's how oil gets in there. So lots of parts for Mr. Mark's engine. Got our TND rocker arms, MSD distributor, got our water pump, got our ATI harmonic balancer. So we're just chipping away. And uh, the reason I was planning on having the heads assembled and having the heads bolted on this weekend and getting the long block painted because our dry sump pan will be here Tuesday and it'd be nice to get the bottom end buttoned up. But we've had little snafus um, on our cylinder head deal. So these are the race cylinder heads and I'll throw some pictures up here in a second, but these are the race heads. So you can't use a stud mounted rocker. You have to either use um, the factory rocker arm setup, which is kind of similar to an FE setup. So just a, you know, an old cast rocker arm um, with springs in between the rockers, that sort of thing. It's not really good for what we're planning to do. And uh, we opted for a set of T&D rockers and T&D makes a set for the race tunnel port heads. With that being said, apparently Ford is not or was not uh, real detailed on their quality control or holding tolerances on their bolt holes. So the there's a, a big plate that mounts to the cylinder head and that's where all your paired rockers mount to. But on the two outside bolts that hold that plate to the head, it uses a stud. And the bolt holes in the heads were off about an eighth of an inch. So uh, I spent the better part of the morning at a good engine builder buddy uh, of mine, his shop, to do some brainstorming. And uh, we were going to think about plugging those holes and, and then re-drilling, but there's not enough meat on one side to do it that way. So we had to uh, come up with another idea. And um, I'm gonna try to get that done next week. And um, I was able to check piston to valve clearance and check our rocker arm geometry and everything. Uh, rocker arm geometry was perfect. I mean, perfect. Our piston to valve clearance was um, about 140, 150 on each side, so we had plenty of that. But uh, we should be making some good progress here. Uh, maybe not next week because it's Thanksgiving, but uh, the week after that. Let's see, I'm gonna snag some valves here. So I don't know if you can see that, kinda. This is a seven millimeter stem, and that little tiny witness mark is tiny. So when, um, when we were checking clearances and everything and checking geometry, I was very, very happy to see just a very narrow pattern near the center of the valve stem. So I um, also was able to look at our push rod. So remember the whole reason for doing the, the solid flat tappet um, was to kind of finagle our ways around the tubes that are in the cylinder heads. And um, I'm glad we did that. That was a good uh, decision, even if it was just by luck by me. But um, just because of some tolerances on our rocker arms, where the adjuster is, and um, the push rod tube in the head, I can use a 3 8 push rod in the intake side, but on the exhaust side, 
about five sixteenths heavy wall is about as good as I'm going to do. And if I would have went with a solid roller and the springs that are needed for that, I would have, you know, I wouldn't have been happy with that scenario. I like a big old fat push rod. And, um, you know, we're running about 450 pounds open, so nothing um, outrageous here. But, um, you know, if we were running solid roller valve, valve springs, then, you know, I, I would have been stuck with a 5 16 push rod. So not good. That's where we are, and I'm gonna pull a bag up over this thing so that uh, I don't get any dust or anything in it, and we'll wait for the cylinder heads to be finished. But just wanted to give you all a heads up. Um, I would have videoed a lot of the work, but to be honest, I was so frustrated with everything going on today. Um, I got a new spring pressure tester, and I'm not happy with it, and um, I ran out of valve spring shims while I was <laughs> assembling. Uh, another set of heads and it's just been I've just ran myself to death today, but uh, That's where we are. Hope you guys are having a good week Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the rest of this small block Ford tunnel port race road race motor This will be a cool one and uh, Maybe mr. Mark would get us some in-car video of him racing when when we get it put together All right guys y'all have a good day and have a good weekend. I'll see you later.